Hey, good morning, guys. It's your local neighborhood hope dealer, San Diego baby, down here just spreading the good news. Wanted to get us off with a little message this morning. Um, stay positive. Keep walking and moving, grooving with the Lord. Keep listening to that still inner voice inside you that's God telling you to go into the certain direction that will bring you happiness and joy and fulfill you from the inside out, all right? Let's start to bow our heads with prayer, all right? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for everything that you do, Father. Please continue to watch over our friend Cameron and heal his body, Father. Please continue to watch over the Delgado family. Keep them strong through this bad time. Please continue to watch over the Philistine families. You build them the character and the foundation to handle the things that they are going through, Father. Please continue to watch over my friend Patrick. Please, please, Father, heal him. Continue him to let him move and groove with you, Lord, because we love him so much. He's a great guy. Please continue to watch over my step-grandpa. He's an amazing man, fought a lot of wars, and just continue to... Uh, uh, heal him and make my family stronger through the process father just please continue to watch over my life put a hedge of protection over everybody in my life and just i want you to know that we love you we love you we love you and we want you to guide us father into the right directions as we listen to your small still voice within our soul that continues to take us in the right direction as you fill us with the spirit and we continue to walk in the light and we thank you lord for this in jesus name we pray amen amen guys hey so first before i share this devotion right now i want to talk about how Anything that's happened in my life is all the glory to God, okay? Anything that has happened, that has turned around my life, the only thing that made all this make sense is the Lord. He's been able to come into my soul and my spirit and change my inner uh, my inner monologue, the, who I talk to, like, like the voice in my body that used to tell me I wasn't worth nothing, that I was a failure. And he has now turned that voice around, and now I know how to listen to him. And I don't listen to the world. I continue to walk with the Lord, hiding nothing from nobody, and the Lord did this. I want to make sure that everybody knows that this turnaround, two years and 11 months sober off of meth and heroin and all substances, has solely been because of the grace of God. Solely because of the grace of God, guys. All right? Today, I want to talk about that, that inner that inner voice within you that, that, that we want to listen to, that small inner voice that talks to us in our conscience and which I now know is God, okay? My, my inner voice tells me to continue spreading the good news. Continue spreading the good news. This is what my inner voice tells me, all right? Back in my addiction, my inner voice, or back before I came to the Lord, even when I, when I was playing baseball and before I got hooked on meth and heroin, my inner voice would always say, you're not good enough, man. You're not good enough. You're going to mess up. You're going to fail. Like I had a horrible inner dialogue to, 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 to my, my, my spirit, constantly breaking me down, constantly telling me I'm not good enough. <clears throat> I was finally <clears throat> able to turn my life over to the Lord. And now, like I, like I said, the Lord connected me. Uh, he sent Jesus down and it connected me to God. And for me, God is like this great baseball coach that I never had. This one that was super encouraging, super positive, just like the best baseball coach I could have ever had. That's what my God is, you know, and Jesus came down and he connected me to this. And I'm so thankful for that. All right. And now my inner, like I get up in the morning and my inner dialogue tells me, Monty, hey, keep spreading the good news. You're doing God's will. Continue to spread the good news. I will, um, I will, um, equip the called. I will equip the called. I will give you what you need to continue to spread spread the good news. That's what my inner voice tells me. My old inner voice used to say I wasn't good enough. You're ashamed. Guilt. All these things. Guys, the thing about addiction, what is so hard is usually we go to do a substance after we've been searching for so long and our life gets so bad with, and we can't find something to fill the void. We usually, we usually, out of a sense of desperation, we end up choosing the substance. And the first time that you put the substance in your body, it messes with the dopamine. So that's your reward system. So that's why we get hooked on these drugs because what happened was it finally filled that void and no one, no matter what, because of science, it's going to feel absolutely amazing. So we have such a hard time trying to stop having to go to that solution because that's the solution that gives us direct payback. But then after a, a long time, it's like, it's like if you keep pulling soda out of a soda machine, it's going to run empty. So what happens is your dopamine runs empty. For me, I'm, I was a hard-headed fool, man. I was a hard-headed fool. I went all the way till the wheels fell off with my addiction. But you have to end well to start well. So I had to end and hit rock bottom at the lowest to finally be able to be like, man, I tried everything on this earth. I need your help, Lord. And now God is coming to my life. And changed my whole perspective. And now I'm able to share the good news. But just remember guys. You know for an addict. It's that first time. Those first years. 
of it be in, of in your addiction that we're continually trying to cling to because at the first moment we put it in our body, it was absolutely amazing. And it was because the devil disguised it as heaven and it took us straight to hell, guys. So now, and when I was in my addiction, that inner voice in my head was always, and it was really loud. And it was always saying, you're a failure. You're a loser. Look what you've done to people. You're selfish. And it kept burying me down. So I had to go tap into the dopamine, the little dopamine I had, just to be able to um, deal with who I had become. All right. Now following with the Lord, walking with the Lord for the last two years and 11 months, I've been able to have a whole nother dialogue in my mind. And this is only because of God's grace and mercy. I've been able to forgive myself. He's shown me how to love, and now I show love to others. He's shown me consistency. Now I'm consistent. This is all the glory to God, and we can live a whole nother way of life. And at first, the devil wants to keep you on his team. But guys, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, and then it will become a habit. And then you will do nothing but love the Lord and you will want to seek him and it will be enjoyable to seek the Lord. And I feel this now and I'm so thankful for that. All right. And now the inner voice in my head is nothing but positive telling me, hey, you can handle this. You got this. There's better things ahead. Bigger things ahead for you, Monty. You're going to spread the good news, Monty. Bigger things are coming. This is what my inner voice tells me. And that's what I'm so happy about that I've been changed from the inside out. It doesn't matter about the outside possessions or materials. It's about who I am on the inside and who I become will change my outside. You guys understand that? I hope we got a good one on that message. I just want to say that like, let's change that inner voice in our head, all right? And now I want to read about self-control, right? It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's the ninth one. And when you, you guys end up having all the self-control, and when you guys end up getting the fruits within your soul, and you start to bear good fruit, you will have self-control. I know it's very hard at first, and I worried a lot about having self-control when I got out of the Salvation Army, but it's been able to, I've been able to absolutely feel that I have it now, and I've been able to have choice, and I'm not overwhelmed by my emotions or my bondage anymore. All right, self-control. Read Galatians. There's a struggle going on inside of us, a fight for control. Our willpower fails us repeatedly. Where can we turn when we realize that we can't get control of our life? That's what I'm saying, guys. So many people think they don't need God for recovery. Well, you do because your own willpower will fail you. Because if you don't have the Lord and the Spirit and the joy... From the Lord and, and spreading the message and continuing to do what Proverbs say. Like I said, Proverbs keep me safe. My grace sets me free. Life wouldn't be worth anything if I was just white knuckle in sobriety. It would be miserable. I would go to the only solution that I ever knew. And that was using drugs. But we suffer from a spiritual malady. Okay? And that's what gives us the grace of God. The spiritual malady is what saves us and gives us joy. So it's worth being sober. It's worth getting clean. Okay, guys? The Apostle Paul said, I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil. The good dog and the bad dog feed the good one, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and then self-control. Self-control is not willpower. It is not something we get by gritting our teeth and forcing ourselves to just say no. Self-control is called a fruit. Fruit doesn't instantly pop up on a tree as a tree grows and seasons pass. The fruit naturally develops as we continue to follow God's guidance. Taking one step at a time, our self-control will gradually grow. Our job is to stay connected to God. It is the Holy Spirit's job to produce the fruit of self-control in our lives. I love that right there, baby. That keeps me moving and grooving with the Lord. The fruits of the Spirit to me are the best words in the dictionary, baby. And then you will bear good fruit. And then you will have self-control and then you'll be able to control this powerful thing called the mind and you'll be able to move into the right direction. And that's what I like to say, moving and grooving with the Lord, baby. Hey, I hope we got something out of that. Like I said, let's change that inner voice, guys. Follow the Lord and he will be a positive, unbelievable, awesome mentor coach to you and the direct relationship with God because Jesus Christ came down and died on the cross and we owe everything to that, guys. Let's have a great Monday. Let's get this week started and let's move and groove with the Lord just for today. Today matters. Let's go, baby.